A man brings his family like this. Look at this. Boys, let's flex for the cameras. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. I got to tell you, this is uh, an experience for me. because I told Luke here from s, s Diesel, this brought back memories. Raising my boys. So this was super nice. And you're here, not just to see us, but you got uh, some fuel systems running out here on the soft flats, right? Yep. We've got a handful of uh, guys competing for Speed Week starting on Saturday. And uh, so awesome. we're excited to try to set some records this year. We've got a couple of customers with new builds. One in particular just built a brand new streamliner that's going for, uh, you know, 300 plus, 350 mile an hour or so plus with the Duramax diesel. <laughs> okay. So, All right. Yeah. I and mean, we heavily support those guys because we do the electronic controls and the fuel system. So the fuel system, Guys can take injectors and pumps and use them, you know, right? But the electronics is where we really get hands-on. So. Wow. That'll be interesting to check out. We're excited to go out there and kind of be on your shoulder and watch you yeah. work. You guys coming out? Uh, I think we're going to. Yeah. I, yeah. I, how could we not? Yeah. I've been and, trying to guilt you guys into it a little bit. Be, like, be, you got to come out. Here's some cool pictures of race cars. Be, be, be kind of <laughs> yeah, you've, you've guilted us good enough. Good, good. I love selling products that people actually want to buy, not ones that they, you know, either get talked into or they had to buy because they had a failure. I think you're you're solving a problem before it happens mm -hmm. isn't that that's your philosophy that's the goal yeah, yeah yeah sometimes guys wait a little too long and then you know they upgrade to cp3 conversions or better injectors or dcr on the forwards or whatever after the fact but ideally we get them to do it before you know we kind of do that when we get a chance an instance when we key way in the, the cranks and the cams yeah. on the duramaxes I, we don't do it before because you basically got to rebuild the engine but on every motor we're trying to do an upgrade to make you know give it more durability yeah. and dependability and things like that you yeah, know the mechanical side and the fuel side like the engine side and the fuel side you could have a million dollar engine but if your fuel system is junk and yeah, then that's your <laughs> you're, you're going to burn a million bucks to the ground real quick yeah. uh, that, that, that's yeah. how you're going to put it right out there our motors are nothing i mean they turn into molten piles and nothing if we don't have a good fuel system or you don't have a good fuel system i think it's probably next to the lubrication says you know your oil system and cooling the oil off and getting it where it needs to go the right amounts under pressure which is exactly what the fuel system is you don't do that right in a diesel motor it's going to be costly like that he's going to show us some really neat stuff today and we're super super excited we love your product i mean the qualities well thank you you know my son has been so impressed with your your company and uh, to have this visit is such a treat for us. We've had a few visits from other people in the industry, and it's just like we feel so privileged. So thank you for well, that. Good. Yeah. Really, thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us, and it worked out well. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go learn some stuff. Sure. Yeah. My question to you is, uh, we've we've done the CP4 to CP3 conversion on the Duramaxes. Mm -hmm. People are asking about the CP4 to the DCR conversion on the Ford. To be honest with you, we don't get involved inside these fuel systems. We just know uh, when the bomb goes off, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, and all we got is shrapnel, and that, that's kind of really hard to understand what what caused it to blow up. So, if you could explain to us the CP4 pump, it's on, you know. Dang near everything from 2011. I mean, you were talking BMW, Volkswagen, yeah, Borns, uh, GL, Max, yep. farm equipment, all kinds of stuff. Tell us why this pump is failing and why it's so catastrophic when it does. Most of it comes down to the bottom end of the pump design. Um, that's that's this, that's actually in here. That's this interface here. Yeah. Right. So in the case of the CP4, it's the main interface is this cam to roller interface here, and so that roller is spinning really high speed in this shoe and that's moving this bucket up and down which has a plunger in it and that's actually what's pressurizing the fuel and that fuel these pumps can t they can go to how many psi the newer generation's 2500 bar which is high 30,000 30, psi uh, but PSI. The, all of them are their rated pressure is well over 20,000 psi uh, okay which is you know used to be Hydraulic, five, five yeah, thousand, yeah, something. five thousand or something, or even yeah. like hydraulic equipment. It's got all these safeties all over it. You're gonna cut your fingers off or inject oil into you if you got a leak, and that's a few thousand psi. Right. So right. yeah, these systems. This thing will cut metal, dang. <laughs> these systems are are you know as much as we give the CP4 a hard time for having an Achilles heel. These pumps are are amazing, honestly, for what they do and what right. they live through. Right. Millions and millions of cycles generating that kind of pressure. So yeah, um, it's true. But the, the issue on the bottom end is that that surface there, if you get a tiny piece of debris or something in that, it'll seize and start skidding, which is what happened to this cam. That's why it's so pitted. Uh -huh. um, basically, it ends up just seizing, and eventually these can even fall out. 
So sometimes you'll basically find you'll have an engine that's just got the guts of a pump down in the valley. Um, and, and also sometimes these can seize up hard enough to slip the crank gear uh, on a Ford because it's not a keyed or welded crank gear. It's just a press fit. So right. if Dude. the pump locks up and seizes, it slips the crank gear and you end up with valve to piston contact and a wrecked engine. Let, let's, you're let's just you're slow thinking down. maybe the I'm same thinking, thing I am. This is exactly why, guys, you know, we TIG weld our, our, uh, our 6, 7 gears onto our cranks because they are a press they're just a press fit they're not key wave yep and we have seen them slip you say that on a, a six seven power stroke but what about a duramax the cam is driven or driving the cp4 pump it could shear a dowel pin if it can shear a, a crank gear on a power stroke Got it. i'm thinking yeah because we have found you know on a lot of the duramaxes we do we turn them down and the pin and the crank gear will be gone and people are saying it's the water pump from the guy to eat uh, tighten the, the snout, the crank bolt back down. It's 250 pounds, foot pounds. And, yep. you know, that's kind of hard to do with an engine in a truck. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, okay, perhaps that, but we're finding it all the way back on the reluctor plate that drives the oil pump and then also on the crank gear. But we also find the pin shearing off on the cam here. When this seizes up, it can actually cause that pin to shear on. Yeah, because when these start to seize, I mean, it already rotates hard because there's so much spring pressure and force right. on these cylinders pushing down. So once this starts to bind and gall up or if they turn 90 degrees like that that roller turns 90 yep like that oh, guy. yeah look at this this old banana here that lifter turns that way and that's just like uh on a roller cam when it, it could do that yep so any of those things happen and the bottom end of this pump starts failing starts to seize up and then eventually actually because it's creating so much load and this this lobe is so aggressive you know, that's a lot of lift in a short period of time. It's got to put that cam. in a 350 yeah. Chevy. Yeah. yeah, it'd be a real lumpy yeah. cam. <laughs> yeah. But it starts to push outward instead of upward because that thing's pushing out. And we'll actually see these pumps split because oh my gosh. it's pushing out so far instead uh -huh. of just up. And so it actually splits the pump in half. And it'll just be, you know, bits and pieces of the pump left, um, which is also creating enough load where sometimes it ends up slipping the crank, uh, so, the crank gear. And the CP4, the reason that this is uh, the grenade, you know, mm -hmm. when this goes bad, you basically just wrapped your whole fuel system. The injectors, the tanks got to come, you know, you got to clean it all up. Yeah. It's because of the fuel flow between the CP4. Yep. Yeah. That's a good point. Because whatever you want to call this, the FCA, the IMV, the VCV, depends on the manufacturer. But this is the metering valve that throttles how much flow goes into the inlets of the high pressure side. On the CP4, fuel comes from the tank, from the pump, low pressure pump, into the bottom end of it, and then feeds up through a little bore right so there. The first place the fuel goes is right into this bore? Correct. So okay. it, it comes into the bottom end of the pump, and then it goes up through a drilling up to feed the metering unit up here, uh, okay. or up to feed the FCA. So that, that bore right there, which if you shine, through yeah pops out right there okay so unfortunately it's a sensitive bottom end to begin with and then if it does go down they feed straight off of that cam and roller that ends up generating metal right up to the fca which then feeds the high pressure heads which then feeds your injectors and that little so. screen on there is not enough correct to to deal with shrapnel that it has happened. It's not a fine enough micro screen and a lot gets past it still. Okay. Okay. So it's interesting actually in the in the CP4s, there is screens on both the return pressure regulator and the FCA or VCB. Well, there was never any of that on the CP3 because CP3s didn't fail like this or they weren't flowed this way either so it's kind of like when you start seeing this like huh maybe there was suspicion that there could be issues some people and we've done them these disaster prevention kits i don't want to call it the the poor man's way but it is like maybe the first step mm -hmm. without replacing the whole pump and everything yeah what can you how does that disaster prevention kit prevent this disaster so a few years ago we developed what was the best thing at the time which was okay if we can't keep the pump from failing and a cp3 doesn't fit in a ford and that's why there's not cp3 conversions for years like the lml duramax had it just physically won't fit right. the block is interferes with the pump our disaster prevention kit has, is a great product that's kind of cheap insurance the factory cp4 still stays in place but there is a uh bypass block or redirect flow redirection block basically that spaces this up a little bit uh -huh. and blocks the flow from that path it feeds it feeds flow straight off the filter which is the cleanest spot in the system 
to your metering unit and then your high pressure heads. So it goes from that, that plastic filter yep. under the hood then to there? Yep. Okay. So then even when the pump is failing and trying to shove a whole bunch of metal up here, it just blocks that off and doesn't let it contaminate the high pressure side. Okay. So even if this takes a dump and, and blows up, you can just take that kit off, change the filter, yep. replace this pump, yep. and then and you're, you're good, good to go. go. It saves your injectors, you don't have metal in the tank, because we have a return side filter as well. Because when these fail, they send metal both to the high pressure side as yeah. well as back through the return right. back to the tank. Uh, yeah. So it's metal everywhere. Um, but that's that that disaster prevention kit is jumps on the grenade basically and takes one for the team <laughs> <That's> <laughs> for everybody else. It. So yeah, uh, Sa it's the sacrificial lamb, so to speak. Yep, yep, yep. and it, it works great. We like yeah. that. There's countless examples of those failing and and it and it saving the rest of the system. But you still run the risk of unplanned downtime. You still run the risk of seizing up and slipping the crank gear and and tow bills and all that kind of yeah thing. So, and and this i mean even to replace your pump i mean a lot of labor and it's still an expensive pump yep. so i mean yeah it's a great disaster prevention but if you you're want, still going to have them not because mm -hmm. you got to replace it so the next step up the best the best product out there is your dcr pump that's the final fix you have yeah, to get rid of the problem altogether and this this came to fruition a couple years ago this was a joint development between us and standardine this is a base, a standardine base pump that they have used in other like heavy duty applications worldwide um, that we partnered with them to develop a solution that'll work in the forward. So the base guts of it are the same proven uh, platform, but then the rest of it uh, that makes it where it actually fits in a forward, it works with no tuning, the truck doesn't even know any different. We make the flow curve match the CP4, all those things to make it work well. Uh, is what we did. To What's the secret in it? What's the difference in it? I'm sure it's the lifter d design? Yep, the cam bottom end design. Instead of it being um, this two lobe cam with uh -huh. a straight roller metal to metal on it, it's an eccentric cam. It's like a rotary engine almost like. Yep, yeah. which is, this is more like a CP3 pump where it's an offset cam instead of a big two lobe. So it just kind of has a nice orbiting path. Uh huh. And it spreads all the load out. Off that bushy. Off that, that, that bushy. Yeah. So instead of having a, a like a real aggressive point contact you know metal to metal you've got all the load from all that pressure that it's generating yeah look spread at out over that big wide surface big and time. then look how it's fed too it's drilled ah uh, for for cross it for lubrication just like a crankshaft oh, actually man. no lubrication on your roller yep and where this one your, your feet pressure feed and your bend just like or, rock i'm sorry your bu your bushing yep oh so that's a beautiful film and uh, really spreads that load out. There's hard, There's no metal to metal surface. Uh, it, it, it does a great job. I have there. to ask, you designed this? Standardine designed this originally. Uh huh. Um, and uh, this is a an adaptation a great design. design. Yeah, honestly, the, that's that's why wow. we were fully on board with it. We're like, okay, we believe in this design. There's lots of durability testing done, lots of joint engineering development, and then we figure out, okay, how do we make this thing work in the forward, similar to how we took CP3 pumps modify them to make them work in LML Duramax. Yeah, that's and that's a beautiful piece of engineering for and sure. I, and I keep saying I'm a kid in a candy store. I mean, that that you can, uh, my little one-year-old could turn that. And then this, I mean, you got my hand sweaty. Gosh, now I'm embarrassing myself, you know? Yeah, you have to put your purse down. Holy <laughs> crap. You want me to do that for you, son? I got it. <laughs> All right. There, there you go. got it going. Uh, my hand was sweaty, guys. So, my so hand was sweaty. some of the comments uh, people say, you know, talk about the CP4, they blame it on American fuel. They say it doesn't happen in Europe. It's not happening on the European. And you're telling, you know, BMW, Volkswagen, mm -hmm. in Europe, you know, they run a lot of diesel over there. Yep. Is, I mean, can you address that at all? Is the lubricity of our diesel fuel here different from the European diesel. Any reduction in lubricity is going to be harder on parts. Um, I mean, the the assumption that like the internet warriors always go yeah, yeah. to is okay. right is it's oh it's European versus U.S. fuel. It's like well I'm sure there's subtle differences. Heck, there's differences between U.S. fuel, fuel to U.S. fuel. And, and different. We uh, Lake Speed talked about that. Yeah. He said you know a refinery here for Sinclair or, or whoever yep. is different. They're doing different diesel all over America. Yep. It's not the same, quote, diesel. They're using different blends or whatever. Yeah, short answer is nobody really knows how many failures there are. A Ford doesn't know because they only have visibility of warranty stuff, right? Yeah, all right. The independent market, like you guys are fixing them. Every we're not day. reporting it. You're right? not reporting it to anybody. Right. We only know what we sell, which is only a fraction of the market. So 
realistically nobody really knows or could have good hard data. There's class action lawsuits and stuff against the CP4 that's starting to dig up some of that data maybe, but one difference that makes the CP4 a little easier, better to live or not, is whether it has the gear pump on the back like the LML does versus an electric supply pump. So this drive tank drives another gear pump on the back for, for your low pressure, the low pressure, like an LML and doesn't you're saying have a, this is this is a weakness. You want your fuel pushed to your pump. The CP4 was designed originally to have a high flow, high pressure supply pump. As soon as you turn the key on, you've got full flow instead of on the other ones where you don't have flow until you're running. You don't until you're, you're already rotating until you start to flow. That creates erosion and cavitation because you're sucking right from from low pressure, high pressure. Yeah, and, and there's not lube and cooling flow going through the case until it's actually already rotating. Yeah. Or if you have any filter restriction upstream, since the LML's drawing through the filters, if you get any filtration restriction, uh, that's really hard on the bottom end too, or any aeration is really hard on the bottom end. Most of the European applications have electric supply pumps like was kind of intended. LML wanted to, to run a gear pump. The, the 2019 to 2020 Cummins ran a gear pump on the back and they oversped it 50%. So the 19 to 20 Cummins that got recalled, because they did have lots and lots of failures. Did you have some of those? Yes. I About the worst version probably, because it was the CP4, which was already having some failures. It was a gear pump CP4, which tends to be worse. And then they sped at 50% over speed. So an engine with 100,000 100, miles has got 150,000 worth of rotations off of wood. Yeah. So it, it was hard on it. There was a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, the, that's, uh, that's awesome information. The pump itself, could we get asked a lot okay well why do they still make them right or how did how come this is the offering that everybody has but in the oe's defense this is a really modular compact pump it's easy to manufacture these heads just come off yeah. like the whole pumping section is right here it's Basically. very simple very simple and bosch would have had bmw coming to them ford coming to them john deere coming to them all these other manufacturers saying we need to make X amount of horsepower, which requires a certain flow, and we need a certain rail pressure capability to be able to hit emissions targets. Yeah. So they just have to develop a pump that ideally works for as many people as possible. So this pump is very modular, because like we were talking about, BMWs and eco diesels and all those, yeah. some are on the side of an inline engine, some are in the valley of a V8, some are out front driven off the cam. Oh, it's, ca it's compact, and like you said, it's it's, these heads can One be side. You, need, you need an inlet and an outlet and yep yeah and these heads can point sideways yep. or forward or back and so as far as like from a worldwide product it's like yeah this you don't have to redesign your pump because cummins has a block that interferes with where you thought it was going to go or whatever so it's ingenious from that perspective and the high pressure pumpiness section is good on it but the bottom end is just very sensitive. Right. So like back to your question on European versus US or whatever else, it just doesn't take much to take it out. So Wait. if you get some aeration, the guy's got an aftermarket lift pump or draw straw in the tank or whatever else, and he's sucking air, then it's a good way to kill the pump. I won't say it begs the question, but it, it gives the answer that what does it matter? It's not like we're gonna be able to change our fuel source. Mm -hmm. we, we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we'll build around that if, if there is a problem there. This solves, this solves the problem. Yep. Yeah. This so it becomes it becomes a conversation that we don't even need to have because mm -hmm. we're not going to fix that problem. Yep. You yeah. You know, you just you make it be able to eat about anything, right? And then you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. We've even had field test trucks accidentally ingest a whole bunch of water and rust and everything else, and uh, not on not intentionally, the truck started having weird uh, drivability issues and the. PCV on the back of the rail, the relief valve on the back of the rail, we found later was packed full of rust and junk in it, clogging it up. So the pump's been dealing with that. And the pump had been running for who knows how long, eating a bunch of water and eating a bunch of rust, and it was a DCR on that truck, and we took it off. Going. I took it apart, looked fine inside, put it on the test bench, acted like new, put it back on the truck, called it good. Wow. Good. And uh, just kept on trucking, so. Well, that, there you go. It's definitely a tough stout design all right well thank you so much for this great information i mean i've learned a ton man and uh it's nice to know they've got you know an option but in my mind there's only one option yeah yeah thank you so much thanks for having me and appreciate have, it let's, let's go out and see some race cars yeah okay. it'd be awesome